So in the early 2000s, skateboarding was incredibly popular. And naturally, anyone who wanted to make some money tried to capitalise on it. Now, you had the obvious things, like, you know, skateboards. However, you also had all manner of clothing, shoes, and of course, video games. Now, the most famous of these is almost certainly the countless Tony Hawk's titles. However, considering how much money there was to be made, it definitely wasn't exclusive to him. Hell, even fucking Disney got involved. Or, you know, on board. So it's really not surprising that one day someone said, well, we've got one of the most successful animated shows of all time, how about we combine it with this massively popular sport and create the biggest piece of shit you've ever seen. Released in 2002 for the PlayStation 2, published by EA, and made by the same people responsible for Animal Soccer World, no, I'm not joking, The Simpsons Skateboarding is one of the worst things I've ever experienced. And that was apparently true for a lot of people who played this game, since it has almost exclusively terrible reviews, with my favourite being, never before have I seen a developer put forth such effort to secure the worst game of the year award. Oh, and um, it's heralded as one of the worst games ever made. Anyway, without further ado, let's see how bad this game really is. So the premise of this game is pretty simple. There's a skate tournament taking place in Springfield, and it's your job to win the grand prize of $99. Now, why everyone in Springfield has taken up skateboarding when they definitely earn more money by just going to work, I have no idea. But honestly, the premise of this game is very much the least of its problems. Anyway, the way it works is you have 10 levels, each level has 3 game modes, and you have to complete them. Well, unless you're me, and you don't. Yeah, I should probably mention this before I start, um, I wasn't actually able to finish this game. See, I'm normally an extremely patient person, but this game brought out rage in me I didn't even realise I was capable of. And its unique blend of incredible difficulty and never-ending frustration meant I got to a certain level, spent four hours trying to beat it, then just said fuck it and used cheats to experience the rest of the game. I mean, yes, I might have been able to beat it given a lot of time and effort, but that wasn't guaranteed, and I'd rather show you the whole game rather than the same thing over and over. Also, given what an immense pain in the ass this game becomes, it just wasn't worth it. So the first mode is Skill School, which is essentially the game's introduction to its various tricks, while also rewarding you with points that you can then use to upgrade your character. How it works is you have five levels to perform the tricks individually, and then a final one to do all of them in a certain amount of time. Now this sounds pretty straightforward, and it would be if this game was actually any good. See, the controls are fucking garbage, and as a result, these seemingly basic objectives become an absolute nightmare to accomplish. Granted, the early ones are pretty straightforward, but if it's anything more than the most basic trick, then actually doing it will be a huge pain in the ass. For example, an ollie to grind combo took me over 20 minutes. And that is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to these challenges. I mean, the later ones have these fucking enormous combos that in any other skating game would be fine, but here feel genuinely impossible. And even when I did manage one, it felt like pure luck. The main issue is, as mentioned, the controls are everything you absolutely do not want in a fucking skateboarding game. They're sluggish, unresponsive, incredibly imprecise, and while doing a trick isn't very hard, doing the right trick is a completely different story. Especially since the game has a really nasty habit of telling you what buttons are needed for a trick, but not how to use them. For example, backflips and spins require the triggers. However, the game neglects to tell you that you need to be holding them before you jump. Now, it's not a huge leap, but anyone would assume you jump, then hit the triggers. So you spend all your time going up and down the fucking halfpipe, wondering why it's not working. And even when you do manage it, you'll realise, oh, never mind, it hardly works anyway.
And that's all assuming you don't just fucking fall over every single second and completely nullify the combo you've spent 25 minutes trying to do. Now, I'm aware this is a common feature in most skating games. However, due to the appalling controls, it's exceptionally easy to do and will drive you up the fucking wall. Honestly, the amount of times I was about to land a difficult combo only for Marge to stack it or completely miss the half pipe is ridiculous. And what's worse is you have basically no control over when this happens. However, a more unique problem this game has is depending on the character you choose, the difficulty will change. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's always hard, but depending on the character, the game can become just a bit more unbearable than it already is. For instance, if like me, you initially picked Homer, you'd find yourself falling over every single second, regardless of how basic the trick is. And it's not until I changed to Marge that I realised why. See, Homer's jump stat is so low, he's physically incapable of doing a trick on flat ground, even after being upgraded. No, I'm not joking. Like, I understand characters having different stats, but having a character with stats so low, he's literally unusable in certain situations. What were they thinking? How did they manage that? And trust me, it only gets worse from here. So next up is Skatefest, which is basically just free roam. Essentially, you have iconic Springfield locations, all of them have various objectives, and it's your job to complete them. Now, as expected, these levels are just full of Simpsons references, ranging from characters to posters to secret unlockable areas such as the Stonecutters HQ. However, while there's a lot of Simpsons stuff to enjoy, the actual maps are just really, really bad. They all feel flat and bland, and the level design just feels really lazy. For example, they'll have obstacles that you'd think would do something, but they just don't. For example, Mr. Burns Mansion has lasers, security guards, and dogs, all of which are things you'd assume you need to avoid, yet none of them do anything. Even when I ride straight through the lasers, or the dogs come right up to me, nothing happens. I mean, what's the point in even having them if they're just going to serve no purpose? Honestly, the only things that pose any real threat to you, well, other than yourself because the controls are shit, are cars which might slow you down very briefly, or when this happens? Yeah, I have no idea what that is, or what triggers it. It just fucking happens every now and then, and there's nothing you can do about it. On top of this, the maps themselves don't feel like they were ever designed for a skating game. Like, it genuinely seems they just got the most iconic locations from the show, tacked on some ramps and rails, and said, oh, that'll do, without ever testing whether it was actually fucking playable. Oh. And this is glaringly obvious when it comes to actually doing the various objectives in each level. These range from timed point challenges, collection tasks, and that's about it. I mean, there are a few unique tasks, but you'll quickly learn in this case, unique doesn't actually mean good. Because the combination of confusing layouts, ridiculously strict time limits, and ghastly controls means even the simplest objectives feel borderline impossible. To the point where it's pretty common to spend half an hour or more collecting one item, not completing one mission, as in collecting one item within that mission. For example, each level has a word you need to collect in a certain amount of time, and these took me fucking hours to complete. Hell, because I was playing as Homer at the time, it took me 20 minutes to get the fucking N in Skinner. And that's just an objective I had a relatively high success rate with. You also have challenges with impossibly high score requirements, collectibles in places that are a nightmare to reach, and herding missions where the AI will not go where you want them to. However, the worst mission, by far, and the one that caused me more anger than anything I've ever experienced in a video game was this. So there's a mission where Flanders has apparently lost a key and it's your job to go and get it. Now this key is fully visible, so you'd assume you can just go up and collect it. 
However, before you can, you have to spend 10 minutes accidentally starting the wrong objective, meaning you have to restart. Then, once that's out of the way, you have to spend 40 minutes slowly making your way up this giant inclining pipe, falling off it about a million times, before finally reaching the key, only for this to happen. Nice 50-50 grind. 50-50. Now at first you'll assume it's just one of the wonky hitboxes that plague this entire game. However, it's not. See, after another eternity of failed attempts, I reached it a few more times and the same thing happened. So, assuming it was broken, I went off to do some other objectives only to discover this. You can't collect the fucking key without going up to Flanders first. Now, I get this game has a lot of timed challenges, but to give you access to an object and not tell you you have to activate it first is ridiculous. However, it doesn't stop there because after even more failed attempts, you'll realise the timer doesn't actually stop once you have the key. No, you have to take it all the way back to Flanders. So all of this means you have to do this insanely hard challenge in a ridiculously short amount of time and that doesn't even take into account the countless times I'd either start the wrong objective or stack it while grinding up the fucking pipe. Seriously, when I finally managed it, it came down to the last second and it took me over an hour. And all of this really isn't helped by the characters constantly berating you for being shit. Was that supposed to be good? Now I know it's supposed to be funny, but when basically everything that happens isn't your fault, it's infuriating, especially since the game has the world's most obnoxious timeout sound. And honestly, all of what I've just described can be applied to nearly every single mission in this game, and it highlights a major issue. See, like a lot of games, it has collectibles, in this case, new boards. Basically, you have to do one objective to unlock the board, and then another one to unlock the secret area where it's being held. However, when it takes this much effort to do anything, why would I bother to unlock them? I mean, I think I managed two and just gave up. So the final mode is Timed Trick Contest, which like it sounds, is a timed trick contest. This entire mode essentially exists so you can access the game's unlockable characters, consisting of Nelson, Otto, Professor Fink, Krusty the Clown and Chief Wiggum. Now this mode has basically all the same issues Skill School does, i.e. the world's shittiest controls. However here, it's paired with a time limit and a point requirement, which makes the whole experience so much worse. Honestly, I think I managed two of these challenges, maybe three, before the point requirement became so high I just couldn't reach it. It's not just because of the controls either, it's also because despite the requirements getting higher, the levels become more and more unsuitable. For example, level 1 and 2 have a combined minimum requirement of 30,000 points, and are full of ramps and half pipes that allow you to reach that score, albeit with a lot of effort. However, level 3 is straight up broken, and level 4 has a point requirement of 40,000, yet has basically nothing when compared to the previous stages, meaning it's insanely difficult to come anywhere near that score. And it raises an issue in that just like the collectible skateboards, why would anyone bother to get these new characters when it's such a pain in the ass? Especially when by the time you've reached them, you'll have a better character anyway. So that was The Simpsons Skateboarding, and it's the worst game I've ever played. Never has making one of these videos caused me more pain than this giant load of rage-inducing filth. Honestly, I'm normally pretty good at keeping it together playing these, but this game broke me. And what's worse is you can't even call this shovelware. 
because a lot of effort clearly went into making it, and it still ended up like this. I mean, the only positive thing I can think of is it's kind of cool to see all these Simpsons references, but then again, I could just play Hit and Run, which has all the references and solid gameplay. Honestly, you have no reason to ever play this unless you want the world's most aggressive headache and the highest blood pressure ever recorded in a human being. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.